Looking into the sky today, the Milky Way is nowhere to be seen. This is barely possible. The view of the sky is gradually disappearing in cities, towns and villages due to excessive lighting. There is so much light around us. The Milky Way has been part of our natural heritage for as long as the existence of mankind himself. It is one of the wonders of the universe that is free for the whole world to see. The moon and the stars have always been used by the ancient world to determine the change of season, to read time and was an important tool for navigation. The moon was the main source of light at night before the invention of the incandescent lamp. The fast growing of civilizations throughout the world has seen an increase in the use of artificial lights. Light pollution is uh, any negative effect that's caused by artificial light. The most obvious example of light pollution is the loss of the night sky. However, there are other also equally as uh, problematic uh, issues to do with light pollution. Uh, because we're dealing with wasted light, really it's light that's going where it's not wanted, when it's not wanted, at a level that's not wanted, then we're also dealing with wasted energy. If we're dealing with wasted energy, we're dealing with wasted carbon emissions, so that's bad for the environment. If we're dealing with wasted energy, we're also dealing with wasted money, that's bad for the economy. But also, light at night, when it's not needed, is actually bad for ecology, it's bad for animals, and now more recent research is showing that it's also potentially bad for human health. In large cities around the world, life is going on around the clock. Nighttime is as good as daytime. Many superstores, nightclubs, restaurants, casinos, takeaways, petrol stations, pharmacies, and other services are open for 24 hours with people shopping around the clock. Excessive light is projected into the sky either by reflection from road surfaces and buildings or directly by projection of light into the sky and this forms sky glow. Sky glow ranges from yellow to red. The illumination of the sky at night is a result of wasted artificial light mixed with atmospheric gases, dust and pollutants. Sky glow is common in large cities, towns and villages at night and can be visible over hundreds of miles. Sky Glow highlights just how much energy is wasted into the atmosphere. I was born in the 1940s and I very gradually watched the night sky disappear over the UK as uh, badly directed lighting has stolen it from everybody. And so in about 1980 I, I think the problem became quite severe and various other people in the British Astronomical Association decided to do something about it and I joined them and uh, they founded the Campaign for Dark Skies in 1989 and it's been going ever since and our aim quite simply is to ensure good lighting practice in this country. The way that we attempt to tackle light pollution here in the United Kingdom is with planning law and also with nuisance law. So planning law what you're trying to do is you're trying to deal with bad lighting or problematic lighting before it actually goes up, before it creates a problem. So we can do this with uh, planning legislation so we can try and make sure that lighting that's put up is only lighting that's needed, is actually kept to a level that's needed as opposed to excessive lighting uh, and that the lighting is actually used when it's needed and is directed where it's needed. So really what we're wanting is for planning legislation to say what you're wanting is the right amount of light where you want it, when you want it. In the national curriculum, uh, children have to learn about uh, the Earth in space and what stars are and things like this. And uh, in the planetarium, I teach them the basic astronomy that the national curriculum requires. But I also talk about the mythology of the sky, the various constellations, and uh, every single child and adult who's been in my planetarium has heard about light pollution because I always mention it. And I say to the children in towns, this is why you can't see the stars from your back garden. And I say to the children in the countryside, uh, aren't you lucky? You can see the stars, but most children can't. You know? And uh, I've had 120,000 people in my planetarium. It seems that the vast majority of light pollution that we get in this country is actually caused by road lighting. Now, clearly we need a great deal of road lighting for safety and security. However, again, 
we can end up with an issue where road lighting and its needs can actually be overstated. Again, it comes down to the fact that light seen is good. However, it's only good up to a certain point. So a lot of vehicles, or all vehicles, should be fitted with lighting, so they should be able to see where they're going. It seems that street lighting clearly is needed in inner city area. Astronomers are greatly affected by sky glow. The campaign for dark skies in the United Kingdom carried out a survey on a group of astronomers and they found out that more than 90% of the contributors were affected by light pollution during their observations. What astronomers uh, want to make people aware of, we're not trying to sort of get all of the lights switched off in the country by any means, so, you know, it's nothing like that at all, because obviously you know, a certain amount of lighting is, is still necessary, but it's trying to get rid of the unnecessary lighting and making sure that any uh, lighting that is there is uh, lighting that points downwards towards the area you want to illuminate. It's not throwing light up into the sky. Well, uh, people have done studies on the effect on wildlife, for example. And um, if you take birds, for example, millions of birds die every year because of poor lighting. They fly into illuminated buildings and ships and things like this. Um, they uh, circle around illuminated towers and die of exhaustion. You, you can find studies about this on all sorts of different websites. People have calculated the amount of energy we waste. Europe-wide, it's something like one and a half billion pounds. That's not million, that's billion. So Europe sends one and a half billion pounds worth of energy into the sky every year, which is, for all of us, not good news. I have done quite a few astronomical photographs in my time. The problem around this part of the world is that due to pollution, the sky has a lot of haze which reduces the quality of the image and as a result it limits the length of time you can ex expose the film for when you are recording images of the sky. So uh, uh, whilst you go out to a dark sky site such as Hawaii where a lot of professional uh, astronomy equipment is based or, or Chile, you will find that they can take hour long photographs no problem at all. Here you're looking at two or three minutes and even then the quality is not very good. But I, I think there is also a sort of slightly philosophical thing about not being able to see the night sky. I think that's important for everybody, not just astronomers. And um, if people can't see the night sky, they think that the Earth is the only thing that exists. And that gives you a very damaged view of what you are. You know, if you think you're really important because the Earth is the only thing that exists, that's bad. Uh, I think we should have a proper evaluation of our place in the universe. We're, we're a very small part of a very big universe. And it's a beautiful thing, the universe. And if it's taken away from us, I think people have lost a very great deal. Another form of light pollution is light nuisance. This is the excess light from the street, car parks, or from neighboring buildings that enter into people's homes where it's not wanted. The second area of law is nuisance. Now, people can either bring a private nuisance action, so for lights disturbing them sleeping, say, then they can take the matter to court themselves. There have been a few cases on that here in the UK. We've had the Stonehaven case in Scotland concerning night fishing. We've had the Bombwick case down on the south coast of England concerning lights shining through somebody's windows. And we've also had the Bacon case in Wales, which was caused by uh, sports flood lighting. But you've also got another area of nuisance, and that's called statutory nuisance. So over the last few years, light is now included in the list of possible statutory nuisances. This is a criminal offence. A statutory nuisance is where a problem is so prevalent that far more than just one person can be affected. So the state then takes the action. And uh, this has been the case here for the last few years. It's been calculated that 90% of British people never see the Milky Way. And if you said, you know, 90% of people can't see the, the sea, 90% of people can't see the fields and the trees, you'd be scandalised, you'd think, that's terrible, you know, it's an outrage, and yet we happily allow the sky to be stolen from us because uh, we've grown up with bad lighting. The problem is that people have grown up with bad lighting. They think it's normal. They think it's normal to have lights glaring in their faces. 
they think it's normal for a big orange glow over their towns and villages. It's not normal, it's something that's really um, unacceptable. And the sooner we get rid of it, the better. Thank you.